Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning into my video. This is Robertson Miller speaking and we are documenting the construction of my very first large redwood river table. The slab you see on your screen right now is the slab that I purchased from Rockler in Seattle. It's a little over six and a half feet long and about two and a half feet wide and the plan is to turn it into a large river table. As you can see, there are two large knots running down the uh, center of it, diagonally, which uh, we'll work with later. So, let's continue. The first step is to remove dead wood, and, uh, or I should say rotten wood. And that's what I'm doing now. The left edge of this table or this slab uh, had a, a, an area of, of rotten wood that was about four inches wide and so I'm chopping it all away with a claw hammer and screwdriver and then a vacuum cleaner to keep it clean as I go. It's funny if you notice the table appears to be moving in this scene. I didn't realize it that the camera was slowly falling as I was doing this and I grabbed it just in time. There was a couple veins of, uh, of wood rot there that I'm chopping out. And I believe I ended up taking out pretty much that whole section of wood. Redwood is very soft, so it's a tricky to know, make sure you're not going too far. Chopping through the dead wood and to realize that when you're getting into the healthy wood. Um, then I cleaned it up with this uh, stiff nylon brush. Um, I should say that I got a lot of my ideas and uh, instruction from uh, Cam at Blacktail Studio in Portland. Um, I subscribed to his uh, course, which I highly, recommended, highly recommend, and I've watched all his videos multiple times, and they're very helpful. Just uh, search for Blacktail Studio on YouTube. I learned about this uh, stiff nylon brush from Cam, and it really does a nice job of uh, cleaning out, especially soft redwood. One thing I noticed watching this video, uh, the brush turns up a lot of fine dust. I should have been wearing uh, my respirator here, which uh, I figured that out later. This side of the slab had kind of a black soot on the edge, and so the nylon brush is doing a good job of taking most of that off. I stopped every about once a minute to clean up the mess to keep the shop clean as I go. Now flipping it over to work on the uh, other side. It really pays to have a good strong shop vac. That nylon brush did a real good job of digging into the uh, deep spots there to uh, get out that soft, rotten wood. Now I, I went to the belt sander to take off some uh, saw marks. I love this table, the uh, this work table, the workbench. Uh, I'll link to the another video I made uh, of the construction of this workbench. I built it with... Uh, scrap lumber that came from a shed in my backyard that I tore down a few years ago to uh, put up a, a new shed. And I had a lot of really high quality lumber left over and uh, I used most of that to make this uh, workbench. Now I'm getting ready to mark the uh, the rip where I'm, I'm gonna split this uh, slab in half to, for turn it in, to turn it into a river, river table. You notice that you can see those two big knots in the center, uh, and I wanted—I didn't want to cut through those, so I drew the, the rip line um, off to the side. And there you can see the rip line, avoiding those knots. Little brush to keep it clean. Now I'm doing a little cleanup on the table where I scratched, scuffed it a little bit. Accidentally. 
this uh, slab of plywood is going to be the bottom of my mold for the epoxy pour. So I'm uh, covering it with uh, Tyvek tape. Another thing I learned from uh, Blacktail Studio. I know uh, uh, a type of material called malamine is often recommended for uh, the molds, but I didn't have a sheet of malamine anywhere near this large, and uh, I didn't want to go purchase it, but I did have this sheet of plywood, and so I just decided to Tyvek tape it. Now it's time for the uh, the rip. This is a Black & Decker circular saw that I've had for about close to 30 or 40 years. And right here, I destroyed this saw. My first significant mistake. Um, redwood being as soft as it is, I kind of thought, well, maybe I can cut the whole two and a half inches all in one shot. And I got about six inches into it, and then something broke inside the saw, and it was dead after that. Um, so then I went to this jigsaw, and it went through the uh, redwood like, like butter. Only problem is the slab is two and a half inches thick, and the jigsaw only cut two inches deep. So I had to flip it over. And a little help from my wife to scribe the cut line. I was pretty happy with this uh, jigsaw cut. It's pretty straight. Now I'm uh, laying it out to uh, show what the river table is going to look like. So the two sides are flipped so that now the live edge is to the center. And I also uh, flipped one so that the narrow end matches with the wide end. And getting ready to trim the ends. The final table uh, is going to be 77 inches. I was working by myself, so I needed a way to hold that measuring tape. And again, the jigsaw goes through it nicely. As you can see, now I'm wearing the respirator. <laughs> Figured that out. So I don't have to breathe the really fine dust that these saw produces from the redwood. This is... Uh, not time-lapse video, but then I uh, played it back at 5x speed. This is a DeWalt jigsaw that I bought just a few weeks ago. And I'm really happy with it. It's a really fine saw. It does a really nice job. And it's really easy to swap blades. <laughs> I should have flipped the slab over and cut from the top. This Doing it this way was considerably more difficult than it needed to be. The trick was to make sure I stayed in the same cut line. The redwood's so soft that the saw could wander out of the cut line and start cutting into the into the wood where I don't intend. And because I was trying to be careful not to do that, I spent a little extra time here. And it would have been a lot easier if I had just flipped the slab over. This attempt at hand cut was total failure. I gave that up right away. Broke that little piece off, which then made it easier to see what I was doing. And there it goes. It was a little complicated, but uh, in the end, I was happy with the cut. 
it was nice and straight and the correct length. A little hand sanding to uh, smooth out the uh, end and remove saw, saw marks. And then the next thing I did was uh, started to uh, pour epoxy to fill the voids. There were some holes where the knots are, and that's the end of part one. Stay tuned for the next video.